All right, environments, here we go. Everyone should care about the environment, whether it's the real environment or the virtual one. Environments are a very useful tool to use so that you can maintain control over the projects that you're working on and make sure that you're separating the work between projects. When you start coding, you don't really think about environments because you're using your computer. Your computer is the environment. And I'm sure like every single person here has run into this where they maybe take a class and they start installing things and then they add more packages and then suddenly over time, your computer gets slow and it gets buggy and then you have conflicts and then you create a new project and then suddenly you have dependency overlaps and it becomes a huge mess. And then imagine you're working with someone else and you want them to run your code on their laptop and they can't because they don't have the same Python version that you have. This is exactly what an environment solves. I think that it's a really good practice to create an independent environment for every single project that you're going to work on. Because if you don't, it's going to have a lot of conflicts over time and it won't be reproducible. Imagine your laptop as a box, and that is the main environment. And within that box, we are gonna have many other smaller boxes. And each one of those smaller boxes is going to be a separate environment. When you're coding anything, you want to create a brand new environment. So for example, let's pretend that we have two environments. On the box on the left, we're going to have different packages, and it's gonna be its own little world. It's like its own little planet. Then in a box to the right, it's another environment. It's like a different planet now. In that planet, the rules are completely different. Other packages exist, things work. Maybe it's Python 3. Environments are a great way to keep things separate. There is a book project you might work on, or there is like a research project. Each of these projects have different requirements. And by using environments, you can really make sure you're using the right environment for this project. And keeping things separate, it really helps us to yeah, test things, organize things, and reproduce things. There are many opinions about what environment manager to use. There's virtual environment, virtual env, there's Conda, there's Miniconda, there's Conda Forge, there's a thousand of these things, I guess. I don't know all of them. I use specifically Miniconda, and uh, we'll cover that in this lecture. Another nice thing about Conda environments is that you can export a list of packages you have currently installed and you can share it with other people. When I work with students um, on research projects, it's often very uh, important and crucial that we are all on the same page, that we all use the same environment. And uh, yeah, I can just export my environment and share it with my students so they can make sure they use exactly the same versions I'm using. So we can make sure everyone is on the same page and we avoid issues related to version yeah, dependencies. So let's go ahead and install Miniconda. How do you know that it's been successfully installed? Open your terminal and now you can just type conda. And as soon as you do that, you're gonna get the help commands, right? That means you have it installed. So if you're seeing this, your install was successful. So if you want to see what environments are currently installed on your computer, you can type conda and list and it will show you a list of all the environments that are currently on your computer. So let's go ahead and create a new environment. So we're going to type this command conda create dash dash name and I'm going to name it, let's say course underscore one. And then these are other optional flags. So I'm going to say I want to use Python 3.7 specifically. So I'm going to say Python equals 3.7 and then I'm going to press enter. going to take a few seconds depending on your connection and once the package is created you'll be able to see it there. Now that it's created I can actually activate this environment. Before activating it it's kind of like I'm in planet Earth and as soon as I activate it I'm going to be in Mars. <laughs> a completely different world. I'm going to transfer into this course one environment so I'm going to activate it by saying conda activate course underscore one. So if I now pip freeze, it's going to actually list all the things that are in that environment. So again, I'm in Mars, and the only thing that's in Mars right now is this package called Certify. 
I don't know what that is, but it comes pre-installed, I guess. I'm going to install a new package in Mars. And by the way, on Conda environments, you can use Conda or pip to install things. And people get confused, but actually you can use both. I use pip most of the time. So I'm just, I'm just going to install PyTorch Lightning um, here specifically, just to show you an example. So I am going to type in pip install PyTorch-Lightning. And then I'm just going to press Enter. And that's going to take the latest version of Lightning and it's going to download it. And also, yeah, you can think of Conda really as your environment manager. You don't have to do everything with, with Conda. Like you have seen, you can also use pip to install packages. And Conda is a very flexible way of managing your dependencies, but it is also working well with other tools. Okay, so a bunch of things happened. So I'm going to clear my terminal and I'm going to pip, free, pip freeze again. And now you're going to see that I have a bunch of other things installed, right? So again, I'm in Mars right now and I installed this async timeout, async tests, cache tools, all these different things, right? And TensorBoard plugin, etc. You know, if you're watching this and you want a lightweight version of Lightning, you could always install just, just the basics of it. Um, here we install a few packages so that you can do a lot, of, a lot with it. Now we're going to create a new environment. I'm lazy, so I'm going to just type in the letters CO, and then I'm gonna press up on my terminal a few times. So I press up arrow, and it's going to auto-complete the things you've done before. So we auto-complete, I'm back to creating the environment, and this time it's going to just say course underscore two, and now I'm gonna have two of these environments. So I'm creating a new planet, basically. Great, I do that, and I press yes, and now I am, and now it's done. So I'm going to activate the new environments, activate course underscore two, and now I'm not on Mars anymore, I'm in Jupiter, different worlds. I know it's confusing, it's not Jupiter notebooks, but it's just a different planet. And now when I pip freeze, I see that in Jupiter, I don't have lightning, which is sad for Jupiter. They really should get a little bit of lightning there. So now you know how to create different environments, very straightforward, just think about it like different planets. I promise you, it's really good for your computer. I really recommend that you create a brand new environment, new planet for every single project you work on, Yes, it seems like overkill, but I promise you it's going to make your life easier the second that you want to scale it up, that you want to have other people collaborating with you. And yes, I don't follow that rule all the time. Sometimes I do like five projects in one environment for sure. But as soon as it becomes more meaningful, I will move it to its own environment. I really recommend creating virtual environments when you can because it really helps keeping your computer more organized. And the more organized your computer, the more productive you will be. And it will also help you to avoid certain problems and certain issues around dependencies. One problem that environments solve for you is the ability to move your code to other machines and for the reproducibility of that code. So in order to do that, you need to create a way to describe what the environment is that your code lives in, right? So one way you can do that is through pip freeze. So if you type in pip freeze, and then you do this little more than, what is this thing called? And then type in requirements dot text and press enter. So what that did is it ran the command pip freeze and it took the output of that directly into a new file called requirements.txt. So this is a little bit more advanced terminal usage, but if you now list out what's in that file, so you can do cat, so C-A-T requirements.txt. Now you can actually see that that file contains the environments um, packages so that now you can put that into your project and then if anyone else wants to recreate their environment, they can install the environment from this requirement and the project can be exactly like the one you started with. Yeah, and you can really think of the requirements.txt file as your traveling checklist. So when I travel, I usually have a checklist of items I want to pack. And the same thing goes for your project. So you have with requirements.txt a file that contains all the required packages that you need for your project and PIP will automatically figure out how to install them. So let's go ahead and practice that. We're going to activate our first environment, which was course underscore one. And now we're going to run the pip freeze command again into a requirements.txt. That's going to freeze the state of Mars into this file. And I can show you that by doing cat requirements.txt. And now you can see everything that's on there. And now we're going to, again, go to Jupyter, so activate the second environment called course underscore two. 
So in Jupiter, you don't have the things that were on Mars. So now to get those things installed in Jupiter, I'm going to go ahead and just pip install dash r for requirements. So it's an argument to the command pip install. And the file is requirements.txt. And I press enter. And now my Jupyter is going to take what came out of Mars, and it's going to install it in Jupyter now. And then just to verify that these things were installed on the second environment, I'm just going to pip freeze. And now you see that Jupyter now has the stuff that was in Mars. Thanks for uh, joining us again. So I hope you learned something useful about the environment and environments on your computer. And if you have questions and feedback, please feel free to reach out to us on Slack. We have many more tips to share with you. And I hope we will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.